guys! Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you my experiences of working with Marion Kane. Now I do want to share with you that I purchased my Marion Kane from bassoonkane.com. Now this is in no way a sponsored ad or a video that represents them. I bought this all with my own money. I am representing the vendor and letting you know where I purchased it because throughout all of my experiences with different styles of cane, I've noted that where you buy the cane from is sometimes even more important than the brand of cane that you're buying. That oftentimes there is a quality quality control that goes with each company as they sell cane. So be sure that if your results contrast with mine on the same brand of cane, that it might have something to do with the vendor. This is also true because oftentimes the vendors, as they are processing the cane, will use different methods. For bassooncane.com, the gouge that I purchased was concentric. This means that it was equal on the edges as it was in the center. Now, this is important because it is a quality control on your own part if you are profiling the cane to make sure that your machine can handle concentric gouged cane. Okay, so let's dig into the actual experiences with the cane. The cane overall I found to be very pithy, more pithy than any other cane that I have worked with in the past. I found it fascinating. I could put the cane after it was a formed reed into soak, take it out of the water, let it dry, and I could watch, literally visually see the fibers start to rise out of the cane. I did this a series of three times just so that I could make sure that I was getting all of the pithy fibers out, and each time as the pithy fibers came to the surface, I gently sanded the fibers out. Now I prefer to sand pithy fibers out because I have found that with a file or also with a knife I can sometimes catch on those fibers and I can pull and tear and easily put a hole in the reed. Now usually pithy fibers are a warning sign. For me they are a warning sign that the cane is overly soft or it's slightly inconsistent. But this cane broke all of those rules. I have never in my life seen a cane that had pithy fibers that rose to the surface as this did and still had the strength that this cane had. I found that it was easily able to pick off high notes. It still had a nice density of tone colors. And even though there were pithy fibers, the cane wasn't just mush. It didn't feel so soft and uh, overly pliable that I couldn't get any strength to it and that the cane needed to stiffen up before I would actually break it in. And when I mean the cane was hard, this is cane that I would be fearful about playing in a rehearsal because it stiffened up so fast when it was breaking in. When I start to break in a reed, what I do is I will clip the tip and um, do the soak in setting so that the pithy fibers will come out if there are any. And then after a little bit, I will play on it for about 30 minutes. Um, if it's slightly unstable, usually this will cause any of the instability to go away. And then I go ahead and I set it and I do this rotation through the reeds as they start to break in. And as they start to break in, they're going to stiffen up and they're going to become harder. The cane stiffens. And as that happens, I like to take the cane down, making the reed thinner. And by making the reed thinner, I add in that flexibility. Now, my normal process of playing for 30 minutes before I would ever even touch a reed was completely thrown off. I was scraping down a reed about every five minutes. The cane was stiffening up so fast. My embouchure, and I'm, usually I play for three or four hours without having embouchure issues. I was having embouchure issues within five to 15 minutes. So I had to scrape the reed down so that I didn't start altering my embouchure or my playing by adding any extra tension in the body because the cane was too heavy or the reed was too hard. And I started taking the reed down. And usually after taking a reed down, you can play on it again for another 30 minutes, maybe even a couple of days before you have to take any more cane off. But within another five minutes, I had to take more cane off. So never before have I seen cane stiffen up so quickly and with such ferocity. It was just immediate that the cane just needed to come off. And I was scraping down to my regular dimensions and the cane still wasn't thin enough. The bit that gives me pause is that I would not want to play this in a rehearsal because if you're in a two to four hour rehearsal, then you're going to be toast within the first hour of the rehearsal simply because the cane stiffened up faster than you could take it off. And I am not someone who likes to adjust their reeds in the middle of a rehearsal. I like to have the rehearsal, then leave, then go and adjust the reed as needed. I don't want to do it on site when I'm trying to focus on the music. 
I do have to note that it did have darker tone colors than many of the other types of cane that I work with. And I believe that in part of this is the concentric gouge. The concentric gouge was not as vibrant as an eccentric gouge that I have worked with. And because of that, I found that this cane in particular, because of the darker tone colors, the concentric gouge, um, and also the lack of vibrancy and the strong resiliency in it, I found it was a great match for my Puchner Superior. Now my Puchner Superior model bassoon has the antique finish. It is not a gentleman's cut. And with me and my body makeup matched together, it has quite a vibrant sound. And I found that the Marion Kane that had all of these elements it made it so that I wasn't overly bright, I had an easier time blending, and that I wasn't going to worry about giving too much. This was a good taming down read for that instrument. I do have to note that the Marion Kane with this concentric gouge on my heckle bassoon was not a match. My heckle bassoon already has so many of those darker tone colors already built into the instrument and the vocal combination. For me, this was not a match in any way to my heckle bassoon, but I did find it had nice tone colors for my Puchner. So it depends on what you're looking for, your ensemble and your bassoon vocal makeup, as well as your body makeup and what you bring to it. But if you're looking for some of these ideas and you don't mind working with a little bit of pithy cane, this might be an option for you. I would love to hear your experiences if you have worked with Marion Kane and also what vendor you bought your Marion Kane from because I do think that that plays a huge significant difference. So please leave me some comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, I would appreciate if you subscribe so that you can keep up with all my bassoon adventures. I will see you guys next time. Bye.